I really love gnomes, I think we all do. But what I don't like about making them is how long it takes to make the basic shapes for the body and the hat. And it actually can get quite hard on your hands and a bit boring. So I was looking into possible solutions for this and I found out a way how you can wet felt the body and the hat quickly and easily, even if you haven't wet felted before. So in this video, I will walk you through every step you need to take to wet felt your own gnome and then beautify it using needle felting. This could be your last minute project for craft fairs or Christmas gifts because I'm not using any fancy tools and if you have wool at your home from previous projects, you can try to use it because I'm sharing both ways how you can wet felt with wool tops and with carded wool. I have divided this video in sections so it's easier for you to jump around and look at exactly what you need, but I really suggest you watch the first part which covers wet felting using wool tops because this will tell you everything you need to know about the basic principles and techniques to use for wet felting. Then we will quickly go over the main differences and key things to pay your attention to when you're wet felting using carded wool. And then of course I'm showing you how to put it all together and beautify your gnomes adding a beard, braids and other accessories. And now let's felt some gnomes! I would definitely suggest you to cover the surface with towel. We are going to need bubble wrap, bubbles are facing up, and another option is shelf liner. Just make sure it has some kind of texture, you will need hot water, I have it in this bowl, soap, I'm using olive soap and kitchen gloves to protect your hands from the hot water. You can download the templates for this project using link in the description box or comment section. Make sure that material you choose is water resistant and you can bend it easily but it doesn't break. This is some kind of floor lining, I think, but I'm not sure. You can also use floor mats for kids' rooms. And as I've previously mentioned, we are using wool tops and wool batting for this project just to see the difference. When working with wool tops, it's important to first find how long is your fiber. Here you can see that I couldn't pull anything until I moved the hand that was holding the fiber a bit further away and now I'm able to pull off these tiny wisps. I will now cover my template, placing the fiber horizontally. I will try to cover most of the template and overlap every bit with the previous one, just a tiny bit. This will help the fiber to catch on itself way better and your piece will be more sturdy. We are going to change the direction of the fiber with each new layer, so I suggest you don't try to bulk it up, we will just add more layers when needed. So here you can see I changed the direction of the fiber, now it's going in vertical direction and again I'm trying to cover most of the template and overlap each new bit with the previous ones. Around the edge I try to add a little bit less wool than on the rest of the piece, but I'm letting the fiber go over the edge a bit, you will understand why in just a moment. Now we have two layers with fibers going in opposite direction and it's time to make the layer flat and wet it. There are fancy tools for it, but I'm just using my hand. Make sure that you are wearing gloves if you're using hot water and try not to flood your piece. We are just adding enough water to soak the fiber so it sticks to the template and to itself. I'm also adding a tiny bit of soap, just soaping my glove and then dipping my hand in the water and tapping over the piece. And when you can see that the fiber is sticking to itself and to the template, we are going to turn this around and work on the other side. Before we can add any wool, we need to fold the fiber over the edge and flatten it as much as we can. 
I find that it's pretty easy to do. Your fiber is a little bit wet and you are wearing the glove. Make sure that you are folding it really closely to the edge. And now it's time to repeat the process we just did on the other side. I took off my glove and dried my hands because you don't want to handle dry wool with wet hands. It will not end well. It will just stick to your hands instead of your work. So yeah, I really suggest you have a towel to dry your hands all the time. And now I'm just repeating the steps we just did on the other side. First laying the wool horizontally and then vertically. When the layers are done, I'm again sprinkling water over my piece and adding a little bit of soap. Now it's time to turn it around and fold the fiber over the edge. And I think now you can see what I was talking about previously pretty well. The layer of the wool is pretty even around the edge and in the center of our piece because we were trying to add a little bit less wool around the edge beforehand. But when it's folded over, it evens out the thickness of the layer. Now I'm going to add two more layers of wool. This time we are going to change the direction of the fiber. I'm placing it diagonally, as you can see. Again, trying to let the wool go over the edge a bit and keeping my layer even in thickness. Try not to touch the wet layer you have underneath too much because it will make your hands sticky. I intentionally left in these parts where I'm struggling a bit just so you know that it's normal and you don't have to worry. And on the next layer, fibers are going in the opposite direction. This will help fiber to tangle way better during the wet felting process and help you to make higher quality felt. Also, it helps uh, the piece to shrink in even amounts in all directions. And again, we are sprinkling it with water and adding some soap. Now you need just a tiny bit because you already have some water and soap in the piece. Turn it around and repeat the process on the other side. I will not include all of the footage here, so this video doesn't get really long and boring. Just make sure that you are adding the fiber in the same direction as you did on the other side. If you accidentally add the fiber in different direction, it might change the shrinkage rate and your shape might change quite dramatically. I'm turning it over, folding the edges, and now I'm going to add two more layers on each side, but this time fiber will go vertically and then horizontally. So in total you will have six layers on each side. At this point, when you have finished laying down the fiber, you don't even need to add any more water, you can just Press on the fiber and it will stick to the previous layers that are already soaked. If you add too much water, first of all, your surface will flood, which is not fun. And the second and even more important thing is that the fiber will start to move around quite a lot and it will not be so tightly snugged around the template and that also might change the quality of your felt piece and the edges might get a bit loose and have some holes in them, so try to keep the water to the minimum. Water is just needed for fiber to stick with itself and uh, the hot water helps the pores to open. At this point my water is not hot anymore, so I can just use my bare hands and I'm trying to add more soap to the piece. 
by soaping the surface because the soap will transfer to your felt. Fold the fiber around the edge and we can finally start to felt. You can take your piece and gently rub it against the bubble wrap or shelf liner you have on your surface. We will increase the pressure we are adding to our piece gradually. At first I'm really light handed, I'm not putting too much pressure on the surface, I'm just rubbing one side, turning it over, rubbing the other side. You can also massage the piece a bit like you can see me doing here. You can wear your gloves if you feel like your hands will get dry from the soap, because they do. And I just don't like wearing gloves that much, so I'm using my bare hands and I'm using really light motions, circular motions all around the surface, around the edges. It's really not a science, just make sure that you are touching every single part of your piece and giving it some love and rubbing. I'm doing it for around 5 minutes because this is quite a small piece. If you are doing something bigger, it might take longer. Just wait until you can feel that the fiber starts to integrate before moving on to the next step. I'm taking my piece, placing it into the bubble wrap, folding it over and rolling the piece up like this. And now I'm going to roll it for about 50 times in this direction. And again, I'm gently increasing the pressure I'm putting on the piece over time. The first 10 rolls are really light and then I'm trying to add more and more pressure to the roll. I decided not to include all of the rolling because it would be quite boring and pretty dizzy. So here is my piece after the 50 rolls. It has started to shrink on this direction, so I'm turning my piece for 90 degrees. So laying it horizontally, I can say, and rolling it up again. Now we are going to roll it for 50 times on this direction. I'm counting my rolls because I think it's pretty important to have even amounts of rolls on each direction, otherwise your piece will not shrink evenly. When it's done, it's time to work on the other side. So I'm turning my piece around, now the other side is facing up and I'm repeating exactly the same steps. Rolling in one direction for 50 times and then on the other direction for 50 times. All this rolling has helped the fiber to felt a bit, but I can pretty easily pull the fiber off my piece, so I can go ahead and be a little bit more harsh to help it felt better. I'm really rubbing my piece against this bubble wrap and adding a lot of pressure to it. Don't forget to turn your piece around and work on the other side too. You can keep rubbing it and maybe add some more rolls until you cannot pull the fiber off your piece that easily anymore. And you will also notice that due to the shrinkage your template doesn't have enough space in the piece. So it's time to take it out. Cut hole in one end of your piece using sharp scissors and take the template out. I would suggest to not rush this process and gradually increase the size of the opening if needed. Remember that you can fold the template and try to use it to your advantage. We will cover up this opening later, so the smaller it is, the better. Once the template is out, I will work on the edge of the cut a little bit, just rubbing it in between my hands and against the bubble wrap or shelf lining. It will help to felt the fiber around here and make the edge smoother. It's not mandatory, but I just like to do it. I'm also working on the rest of the piece for a minute or two, especially on the places that were on the edges of the template, make sure that I don't accidentally form any seams. This will help the shape to be really rounded.
and then you can rinse it making sure you get rid of all of the soap. Look how much it has shrinked. I will now fill it up with some old newspaper and leave it to dry. Wet felting the body of your gnome using carded wool is basically completely the same. The only difference is how you find the main direction of the wool fibers. So peel a thin layer of your wool batting and try to pull it in different directions. Most of the fiber will be laid out in one direction still and you will easily see that your batting regains its shape pretty quickly if you pull the fibers in this direction. Once you have figured it out, basically the steps are completely identical to the previous ones we used with the wool tops. I'm now laying these pieces horizontally. It's a bit quicker process because of the carded wool than it was before with the wool tops and then I'm adding another layer vertically. So here you can see I'm again checking for the direction of my fiber and here I go. I'm making sure that I'm covering the edges too and leaving a little bit of fiber going over the edge so I can fold it over later. Be careful when you're adding the water. Carded wool tends to soak it up pretty quickly so you might think that you need to add more but that's not true. Try to add as less as you can and concentrate on the soap. Here you can see I'm adding soap to the surface because it will soak into our wool when we are turning our piece around. Folding over the edges is a bit more tricky here it went pretty smoothly but make sure that you are spreading the fiber and there is no thick folds because if you have any thick pieces or specific areas where you have more wool you might end up with a little bit of bumpy gnome body. Other than that the process is completely identical. We are laying out six layers in total on each side. And then we can go on to wet felt the piece using all the same techniques I already showed you with the wool tops. Let's not make this super long and boring. I will not show you the whole process again. It's completely identical. Feel free to check out the previous section as many times as you need and ask questions in the comments section. I'm always happy to help. As I promised, this is a really simple project and wet welding the hat is basically the same. There are only a few key differences that I will try to point out now. The way we are laying out the wool and the number of layers stays the same. One of the things I would pay a little more attention to is folding the wool around the edge of your template. So now I have laid out the first two layers, added a little bit of water and I'm turning my piece around and really pulling the fiber towards the center of the template to make sure that the fiber is hugging the edge of the template and going in all of the little nooks we have here. So take your time on this step and really make sure that you're pulling the fiber towards the center. And this applies to both carded wool and wool tops. If this intimidates you, you of course can make the edges of the template straight so you will have like a triangle. I decided to make it wavy because it will help to create the creases on the hats later on. The only place I am not worried about wool going over the edge of the template and catching up on itself is the tip of the hat. It's actually quite nice that the wool is felting together over the template here because it creates a thread-like structure and it gives nice finish to the hat. The felting process itself doesn't change. First I spent around 5 minutes working with wool with my hands and rubbing it against the shelf liners. Then comes the rolling again 50 times to each direction. And the only thing I would like to point out is how I'm treating the tip of the hat. It's important to work on it 
from all sides to make it round and evenly felted. I'm really rubbing it against the shelf liners and the bubble wrap and I'm also using my kitchen gloves because they have some texture on the surface. Taking out the template from the hat is super easy. You can now just cut open the bottom edge of your piece and take out the template. Just like for the body, I suggest you spend a little bit of time working on the parts that were on the edge of the template and also felting the fresh cut you made. And basically that's it. It's really that simple. I will now just quickly wet felt my green hat using my wool tops and then I think we can jump to the conclusions, comparison of the results with wet felting with carded wool and wool tops and of course assembling and finishing our gnomes. And here are my results. Although I used the same exact template for both bodies, the green wool was merino, but the pink was carded Coriadale. And this is nice example how the breed of the sheep could change the end result because the merino is shrinking more. It's not a huge difference, but I think it will show in the final result. And the same goes for the hats. The green hat is smaller, although I used the same size for the template. I wish I had carded merino wool available so I could show you even more direct comparison for using carded versus wool tops from the same breed, but I think what you gained from this tutorial was the techniques you can use with both wool processing types. And here comes the blueberry. He is always trying to sleep on my wet felted items while they are wet. Speaking of drying your pieces, I think it's really important to stuff the bodies before you let them dry. Air drying is the best for these pieces and while the felt dries it will take the shape in which it's left. So. I'm using old newspaper and really stuffing the bodies full with it. You can also use your bubble wrap that you don't plan to use for wet felting anymore, so there is one additional use for it and you don't have to throw it out already. Uh, I know that some use pieces of old clothing, it's just a personal preference. I'm adding some newspaper to the hats too. I let them dry overnight and they were ready for assembling in the morning. So here are my bodies fully dried. I have removed the newspaper and now we are going to fill them. I'm using core wool, you can use wool scraps from other projects, the color really doesn't matter. You can also use wool you don't like for felting for some particular reason or polyester filling for doll making. If you're creating ornament for Christmas tree, you will probably not add too much of the filling, you will just fill it up for the looks of it and try not to add any additional weight. If it's a freestanding decor like my gnomes, they will be standing on the table, so I'm adding quite a bit of the filling to make them firm. You can always add some additional weight using stones or beans or other types of weights, just to make sure that your gnome is really standing still and in case you're creating doorstopper, you don't want to knock over your gnome every time you open up the door. Once you feel like you have filled your gnome, it's time to close the top opening. You can of course use sewing needle and thread, but I decided to close it by felting it. Make sure you're watching your fingers and I'm just 
pushing two parts together and felting them, changing the direction of my needle all the time. Just to tangle these parts together, I'm not trying to create super neat finish as we will cover this part with hat. Here is the result. Now let's prepare the hat. There are two main goals. First one being neatening up the tip of the hat because it's not pelted neatly. And then we will work on the brim, folding it in to make it more chunky and neat. Don't be afraid to use your scissors if needed. I'm just cutting off some little seams and bumps I accidentally felted and I'm also cutting up this excess wool from the tip of the hat. And then I'm going to felt it, turning it around and around to make it more pointy. I'm slightly tucking in the edge of the brim and felting it down using multi-needle tool. It has 38 spiral needles. I will use them throughout this project, nothing more. This is my favorite needle. And we are just lightly felting the edge in there. You don't have to be super neat because we are going to attach the hat to the gnome and then felt this part some more. Quite the essential part of the gnome anatomy is his nose. To create it, take the wool you like and roll it in the ball as tightly as you can. Place it on your mat holding it with one hand and watch your fingers. You can felt it using a single needle and point your needle towards the center. I prefer to felt the nose really firmly because people do like to touch them. So. Take your time and turn the little nose around and point your needle towards the center all the time. This will ensure that the shape is really rounded and the surface is neat. We are finally ready to assemble our gnomes. First I'm going to put the hat on my gnome body making sure it overlaps for around one centimeter and then I'm using multi-needle tool to attach the hat to the body. I'm leaving around half centimeter from the brim so it can easily fold up. It makes the look really cute and you will be able to attach the nose underneath it. But for now all we have to do is felt the head to the body at this half centimeter mark all around. Here is my result. We will scrunch the head up later, but now it's time to add the nose underneath the brim. Look at your gnome from all sides and decide where you would like to put your nose and make sure that you are tucking it under the brim like so. This is the iconic gnome look and all you have to do to attach the nose is to focus your needle at the base of it and slightly tilt it diagonally so you're really tangling the fiber from the base of the nose to the body of your gnome. Remember to watch your fingers and you can always turn your gnome around instead of trying to twist your hand in weird angles, remember that. When nose is secure it's time to scrunch the hat. We are going to do it like so, working on one fold at a time and changing the sides where the fold is placed. Again, for me it's easier to work holding my gnome upside down. You can check how it's easier for you. I'm working with single needle and just pushing the hat down on this side, creating this fold. And remember that the fold will look exactly how you're holding it. So you can always change the position. And we are having another cat visitor. Mango is being really naughty here and trying to step on my needles. So I guess we are having another kitty break. Okay, now back to felting. 
You can always use the single needle or switch to the multi-needle tool. I like the first secure the fold in the position I like using single needle and then felt it a little bit more using my multi-needle tool with two needles in it. It just helps to make the process faster. But the most important thing is that you are having fun with this process. Nobody knows how this hat is supposed to look and the fabric will naturally fold and show you the ways it wants to stand and it's really relaxed and simple process. As I said we are going to switch the sides so now I'm on the other side of the gnome's head and I'm pushing the hat towards the head creating the fold and felting it down. You don't have to go all around the head with each of the folds. Here I'm creating completely new fold and quickly moving on to the top of the head and scrunching the whole hat towards the head and this makes all the folds visible and you can check out how you like that. It actually looks best if they are placed in random and you first just quickly secure the look that this push is creating and then you can felt some more a little bit later to really secure the folds. Here is my gnome with all the folds secured and now I'm going to tip the top of the head like so. I'm placing it on my felting mat, holding in place positioning it as I want it to stay and just felting a bit. And we have created a basic gnome. Now you can add some personality to it by adding some beard or hair and accessories. I have decided to create a beard in these beautiful colors. It's blend from world of wool, it has a little bit of sparkle in it, but I also would like to add a little bit of purple in the mix just to make the colors match better for my gnome overall. So I'm adding tiny amounts of purple on top of this blend. You can also make your own blends this way, just adding tiny bits. And I'm making sure that the fiber is laid out in one direction only and it's not messed up. I'm trying to lay it as flat as I can. Now I'm placing the wool on my gnome, adjusting the middle section of the fiber so it's just underneath the nose. I will felt straight line here and attach the wool this way. Again, take your time and carefully needle felt just under the nose. You can always hold the fiber with one hand. Just place your hand on one side of the fiber to hold it in place and felt in one straight line. I'm going over this line quite a few times to make sure that I have really attached the beard in place because people do like to stroke it a lot. Then you can fold the top part down and you have your beard. Of course you may need to brush it. You can use your needle or you maybe have a clover tool for it or a little brush. Sometimes it looks better if you add a little bit more fiber on the sides of the nose too, so the beard is more full. So don't be afraid to add more where you feel like it's needed. I'm using my favorite clover tool to brush the beard. I will link it in the description. And then we are going to give this beard a little cut. I'm just chopping up the tips. I felt like I want the length of the beard to be a little bit more even, but this is a personal preference. So you can try out different beard styles yourself. 
You can play around with the angle, how you're holding your scissors. It always creates different effects. And now I'm just trimming the ends of the fiber to make them look more thin and natural. So you can really play around with this. Here is my beard all finished. And now I'm going to quickly sew a little bell on the tip of his hat. And with that, my gnome gentleman is finished. Now we can move on to create his lovely lady. First, we need to get to the basic gnome stage. So attach the hat, scrunch it up and add the nose. For each of the braids I'm preparing three equal sections of wool tops. I'm using the same blend from World of Wool I used before for the beard for my gnome gentleman. And again I'm adding a little bit of purple to the blend. It's just my personal taste. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Now we have to secure these sections on one side of our gnome. I have already created one of the braids so you can see the finished result better but here you can see how I'm adding the section so the seam where we are going to felt the fiber to the body of our gnome is hidden underneath the rim of the hat and I'm just taking my needle and carefully planting the fiber. You really need to securely felt it down because when we are creating the braid we are lightly pulling the fiber out so you can even fold the fiber over and felt it from the top for extra security. When the first section is secured I'm adding another one right next to it in the same fashion. And the last section also goes right next to the previous one. I believe you already know how to braid. There is nothing special about this process in this case. Just make sure that you are including all of the fiber in the braid and hiding the tiny ends like I just did. When you get to the end of your braid, this is how you will finish it. Take one of the strands and wrap it around the end of the braid. Here I'm really trying to pull the fiber and I'm wrapping it around my braid two times. Then place the end of your braid onto the felting mat and felt the fiber together in this section. When it's done you can now attach the braid to your gnome a little bit better. This is also completely optional but I like to do it just to make sure that my gnome lasts longer. I'm going all over the braid and focusing on the middle section not to ruin the beautiful puffy parts and this way I'm securing the world to my gnome body. Drop off the excess ends and your braids are finished. My gnome lady turned out to be way bigger than her husband because I used the pink carded wool body for her. So I felt like I need to add some more bits to her so she doesn't look so plain. I twisted some red wool and added bold red lips. 
I don't have any tips or tricks for this. I just worked on the shape on the go. And this is a great example how you can just play around with your gnomes and create your own unique characters. First, my lips looked like a red French mustache, but then I folded the ends and you suddenly get the lower lip. They look quite bold at first and then I felt them a bit more to flatten them and it definitely helps. The last accessory we are giving her is a pearl necklace. So I added a few pearls to the string and sewed it on to my gnome lady. It really helped to hide the ends of the thread. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please hit the like button if you did and let me know in the comments section what kind of gnomes do you plan to create and will you be using the wet felting techniques I shared today. Don't forget to subscribe to see more fun tutorials and see you in my next one.